Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. I'm really gonna be focusing on finishing this mosaic because I have a deadline coming up in a couple weeks and I don't wanna push it to the very last minute. So I, I knocked out a lot of this side last week. I'm gonna finish up these few pieces and, uh, and then work along the bottom up here and then I'll flip it around and finish up the top. Let me get out. <music> Home Depot and this is what I came for half inch birch plywood I used to carry a two foot by two foot section or piece but now all they carry is the two by four so I have to get it cut down because I need a piece that's 15 by 15. I asked that he cut this very carefully exactly 15 inches by 15 so he's very carefully checking it over Have 
wood cut at a hardware store, you have to consider a couple of things. First of all, the piece of wood that I purchased was a two foot by four foot piece of wood. And the first thing to consider is that that is the nominal size. That is not necessarily the actual size of the wood. So when they cut it down, they may not be able to cut it to the size that you want because it might not start at two foot by four foot. And then second of all, the width of the blade when they cut it takes out about an eighth of an inch. And so if you're cutting across the wood, that can add up and you can have a short piece at the end. So I asked specifically for 15 inch by 15 inch piece very specifically. I said just one. And then after he cut the first one, I said he had already a strip of it. I said, go ahead and give me a couple more 15 by 15s. And then the end of that piece, he ended up uh, keeping a scrap. I didn't really want it, but there was another nine inches on the other side of the wood. It was 24 inches. He cut 15, there should be nine left. But when I measure, it's less than eight and three quarters. So this is an oddball size. Um, I did ask him to cut it by 12. So eight and three quarters by 12 eight and three quarters by 12. It's odd because you can't get a frame that size. That's the problem. And this one's also 12, but then at the end, because of the width of the blade, this piece is only a little over 11 and a half. So it's really an oddball piece. And it's not nine, it's eight, almost eight and three quarters. So you're gonna end up with some, some waste, but these uh, make good samples if you want to not frame it necessarily, but try out a technique or maybe a grout color or whatever. Uh, it doesn't need to go to waste. Oh, and I forgot to mention, at Home Depot at least, they actually have an area of pre-cut pieces and it says one half inch by 12 inch by 24 inch. And when I measure it, that is actual size and it says on here actual dimensions so it's not quite one half inch it's 0.47 inches but it is 12 inches by 24 so that is great they also have a 12 inch by 12 inch by half inch piece of birch plywood so those are really handy because they're pre-cut and they're nice sizes i also wanted to share these gorgeous van gogh pieces that i just ordered for my students just gonna run through them real quickly. This was a hot pack from Delphi. I also got a cool pack of Van Gogh. They were having a special on it. Look at these coppers. Oh, and then a copper and gold with red. Copper and red. The red is sort of pinkish. This is the red. I like to have this in the classroom because it really can't be used for anything other than mosaics. It can't be used for stained glass because it, when you hold it up to the light, it kind of loses its color. Uh, but it's very easy to cut this. And so it's good for beginner students and everyone else. I may as well demonstrate how easy it is to cut. I like to use my grid and cut it down into several pieces for my students so that there's enough for everyone. It always just cuts like a dream. substrate that I'm using is very absorbent and as such it would pull the 
moisture from the adhesive. I'm going to use weld bond adhesive and it would weaken the bond. And so before I begin, I am going to seal it with Kills Primer Sealer. I know that's kind of hard to read. This is a latex primer sealer, so it's easy to clean up. And let me get after it. I like the white because it'll make the colors pop if they have any translucency to them because I'll be using stained glass on this project. I have a new project here all set to go. I'm gonna work on the design that I've been commissioned to make another sunflower. And I think I have the sunflower thing down. But one thing I'm going to do a little differently on this one is I'm just making one big sunflower and I don't want to put it smack in the middle. Uh, I'm going to use the rule of thirds, which is uh, a way of uh, making compositions more interesting where you put the focal point on uh, one third of the way up or down or over or in particular where the third lines cross. And although I'm not going to move it over that far because I think it might look odd, I'm gonna have it in the center, but it is gonna to be towards the top. And that's gonna give it more room for some stem and leaves. And uh, it's still gonna have lots of space for bright blue sky. So when I measure this, uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the center of the flower almost round, but just slightly oval. And it's gonna be more of a regular sunflower I am going to try to make some interesting petals that curve around to give it interest and uh, also with a few gaps so that it's not 100% uh, symmetrical. I don't want it to be 100% symmetrical. And then the client I've talked to wants the inside to be to have more oranges and browns and less of the black seeds, which really makes sense because the black seeds don't even ripen up and turn black until later. Or in this case, this will just be a different type of sunflower that doesn't have black seeds. It has maybe brown in there. So anyway, to, so I've already marked off some things. I've measured and marked off some things. So with this being 15 inches, and I want to make the center of the flower one third of that, it is five inches wide, and it's almost smack in the middle, but it is about one third of the way down from the top. just gone over the design with a black pen so that it shows up better. I'll take a photo of this, shoot it to the client, make sure she approves it before I transfer it to the board, and hopefully I'll get started on it early next week. That's it. My son came to work on his project this week, and so here's an update of the ice cream cone. He finished piecing it, and will be grouting it soon. Hey, everyone. I've been teaching mosaic classes in the county that I live in for nine years. And this year they are celebrating their 30th anniversary. The facility itself is celebrating its 30th anniversary. And as part of that, they want to make a commemorative community mosaic. And they asked me to head it up just one week ago. And it is kicking off in two days. So a really quick turnaround. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I'm prepping for it, but I'm not gonna start uh, anything else today on it. All right, so first of all, this is the flyer that they put out uh, for the event, the, the anniversary party or whatever. The place is actually called The Art Place, and this is what we're going to be making. We're gonna be making a sign for inside their registration office, so it's gonna sit behind uh, the person that signs people up for classes and that people ask help from. And let me show you how big it's going to be. Oop. Here it is. It is six feet long and it is 18 inches high. Uh, I have given them this piece of hydroband board and there was a gentleman there at the facility that actually built this little frame. So I'm just going to be attaching it to the frame. Then I'm gonna be wrapping the edges with uh, alkali resistant fiberglass mesh and putting a coat of thin set along the edge just to cover that raw edge there, to cover the seam and to cover wherever the weedy washers are on the front. 
that's it. And just to make it a little bit more interesting because this is quite plain as far as logos go, we are going to be using some mirror for the letters, art, the word art. And we're gonna be using some fun colors for the other two words, the and place. And it's just going to have a white background. So the community is gonna be helping out to uh, place the glass and then I'll be grouting it and then they can hang it up. So I can't wait to show you that whole process. The room that this sign is going in is not a very big room. And so that is one reason we decided on the six foot width. And also because the board itself comes in three foot sections. So six foot made it pretty easy. And um, the frame that's been built on here, these are, I guess, I don't know if they're called two by twos, but they're actually, they actually measure one and a half inch by one and a half inch. And they're just square pieces. And then there's one in the middle. And so it's not wide enough to put a weedy washer on either side and actually get the screw in there quite easily. So I just spanning this and this will be covered with the mesh and thin set to hold it in place. I'm just gonna screw all these washers in with the ones that came in the weedy washer kit. I bought this at the tile shop, not too far from my home. And it came with all these screws, which I normally don't use and the washers come in really handy. 100 count. I'm getting low. washers and across the seam and around the corner on in the middle and then I'm going to show you to give you a look at the back this is the frame that was built to support the two pieces and to tie them together and this is what they will attach the French cleat to so that they can hang it on the wall when they're done Oop. all right so now the side this edge is raw and that is not gonna look nice. So I asked them to prime this wood and that is why the edge is primed. The tape I'm using is almost a perfect fit for just the edge, uh, but it's a little bit too big. So I'm having to trim off just a little bit so it fits flat on this edge and covers the whole thing. And then the thin set will have something to cling to a little bit better. That's it.
to, to prep this substrate. It's a little bit rough and I can see some of the mesh through the thin set, but I am planning on giving it a good sanding tomorrow. So within 24 hours, I will, I will take it outside, give it a good sanding. And then before this project is complete, I will likely put another coat on the outside to cover up any mesh that might be showing. And then one last thing, I did use a mortar add mix when I mixed my thin set because it says on the container that it increases the bond strength and performance. It improves water resistance and all these other good things. So it's just a little bit better than water. It's, it makes the thin set better and stronger. So for this project, I thought that might be a good idea. Now in just a few days, we will transfer the image onto here using a projector and then we'll start laying the glass with a lot of volunteers. That's it. All right, it's the next day. And as I was laying in bed last night, I thought, you know what? Why don't I go ahead and put some extra washers here on the ends? It, this whole thing, the weak point is sort of in the middle and it wouldn't hurt to just attach the go board uh, on the corners there instead of just on that one seam. That's it. I have finished all the background on the bottom and I have turned it so that I can work on this side. And when I get to about right here and finish all this, I will go ahead and turn it so I can reach the last corner. It's getting there, whoa. When I've been making this sky, I've been working bits of orange and green into the sky to pull some of these colors back and forth so that these things have a relationship to one another. And now I'm over in this area. I've already added this green piece here. This piece is not glued down. But I wanna add an orange piece in here. And I want your eye to move around the piece like so. And so I am going to add a very small curved piece somewhere in here that helps to lead your eye up and around. It will be extremely subtle, just one thing. And then over on the other side, I will try to have one piece, not of green, but of the orange to lead your eye back around down that way. I know a lot of these petals sort of spring off and go out into space and I want to have some little subtle things that keep your eye moving around instead of off. So that's just one little way that I will help to achieve that. hoping to finish it, but I did have a windfall community project fall on my lap in the past week. So next week I hope to get this last quadrant done because that's my deadline, as well as work on the frame and get it attached so that I can grout. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.